Hey guys, uh, this is my DK64 any percent tutorial uh, for intermediate level. Uh, basically what I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to be doing the route that I use for my actual like world record attempts uh, minus one or two things that are pretty hard and save a minimal amount of time. Um, if you haven't watched my beginner uh, tutorial yet, I recommend starting with that uh, because it will cover more some of the more basic tricks and it gives you an easier route that I feel is better to start with. Uh, Alright, so first thing we're going to do is uh, fuck your weapons glitch. Um, just make sure what I do is I delete all my files. Um, you want to turn on story skip, obviously to skip all the cutscenes. Um, this uh, the way I'm doing this is going to be different than the way I did it in my beginner's tutorial. This way is faster. I'm not sure by how much. But we're just going to start it up um, the way I did before with the intro story. Um, hitting A, waiting for it to turn blue, hit A again. You hear the music cut off, and then you just got to follow what I'm doing. So, should be good. Alright, again, no sound, so very quickly, you want to go over, select file 1, start it up. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm killing time, like you noticed in my last tutorial, if you watched. I would sit in the menu and wait to a certain amount of time. What you can do while you're waste, waiting for that time, you can get this little intro out of the way. Um, so you kill the text very quickly, go to quit game, and then mash start in order to skip this cutscene. And you're pretty much just, just going to keep mashing start until you get to the main menu again. And again, since I'm not actually hitting the reset button, the glitch, the intro story glitch is still going on in the background. Now very quickly, I want to go straight to the Rambi menu. I hit A B at the same time. I see the two pop up, now mashing B going over the crown like I did before. This is all the same for my old tutorial if you want a better explanation. At this point, it's exactly the same. Holding A with Caesar turns black, going right back over, and start. So if you got confused by the end part, uh, just watch my beginner's tutorial again. It's exactly the same once you get back to the menu. It's just, it cuts off the time that you sit waiting for that intro to go by. So, now we're going to start off just like we did before. Uh, we have to talk to Cranky, activate all the trading barrels, and then leave. I'm going to be breezing through most of these parts since you can watch the other tutorial and get a better explanation. Um, but for the new stuff, I will try to give a, be a very good explanation the best I can, I guess. Uh, for this, I hold upright as soon as I dive, and just hold A. And then when I get towards the bottom, I just let go of the joystick, and he swims straight into the coin. And I usually get a 56 like that. I'll just go to the next one. Um, when the screen goes black, like right before it goes completely black, I will hold up and A on that first one. You can sometimes get a barrel jump, and that saves a good couple seconds. Again, that's the same as normal. Uh, pick up all the oranges, go to the tree, spam them. I didn't get a barrel jump there. You know if you get a barrel jump, um, you will just jump out before the barrel blows up a lot sooner. Again, these are the same. Just run up, press and hold B until you throw it. And on the last one, aim for the tree so it blows up sooner. There we go. See, I got it there. And you also notice the DK like kind of stops for a second because it thinks he's in the barrel. I, for that one, I hold the same direction of just right. And for this last one, I'm going to hold down and A. As, and hit A again. I almost missed that. Uh, 
hit A as soon as it's about to go black. Oh, I missed it that time. Alright, now we're just gonna head right over to the water. Do the same, so the vertical walls, just hitting Z, holding A, C up twice while holding A, and just swim straight and you should hit it. Alright, uh, same route. We're gonna go straight to the fairy camera. Again, I guess some people didn't notice, but um, if you're swimming on the top of the water and you hold B, you swim faster. <laughs> That's kind of something I learned as soon as I started playing this game, but I guess there's a lot of people who didn't know that. It helps you like save a little bit of time. So like up here, if you swim, if you surface too early, you can hold B and up and swim faster. Then you just hit Z and mash B like normal while holding up. Then you come up here. You can turn the camera if you want to make sure. Or if you're fast enough, you can have the camera like this and just kind of tell where you are and just jump right into the loading zone. Alright, getting this pound move again so that we can get rainbow coins and buy moves. I like to roll here and then just run straight down the middle and he usually doesn't get stuck. You can roll twice but sometimes he'll like he'll just get stuck like this. So I like you can just kind of wiggle your way and hold up until you get through. Alright, so getting these crystals, you first get the right one. As soon as you touch it, hold left so you kind of do this little bounce off of it. And then you're going to roll get these two. Dive immediately because swimming underwater is a lot faster than swimming on the surface and just go straight to K-Lumsy. Oops. Oops. <laughs> okay. Now we're in. I'm just gonna sit here and mash B to skip through all the text. Okay. And uh, again, I guess as a side note, just make sure you do not touch this warp one when you come out, or it will cost you 20 seconds, <laughs> because then you can't do a cutscene skip in here. So we're just going to swim straight over here. Uh, we're going to attempt to skip this cutscene. Normally, what you want to do is like as soon as you come out of the water, just roll. I like to roll a little bit, then jump out of it. You want to aim for... You don't want to aim too far left, because then you just roll in without getting the banana. But you don't want to aim too far right, because then you just pick up the golden banana. So it's kind of like right in the middle. You're trying to almost hit the loading zone and the banana at the same time. And it will just pull you in while he's dancing and skip it. It saves about 5 seconds. So just kind of... There we go. Perfect. So again, that just skips the dance. You just kind of roll once, kick, and then roll again. Alright, uh, we're gonna just roll over here to this last tree. Um, I can explain tree jumps uh, very quick. It's pretty picky, uh, but basically, before you hit the top, you want to hit A. I'll try to get it for you guys here. 
Um, but what will happen is when you jump, you'll do that kind of. You'll just instead of jumping all the way up then landing, you'll just instantly appear on the leaf. It saves a little bit of time, and then you just regular kick, jump, and B to get over. It's not too hard, but you don't want to take the time to set up. Obviously, you just kind of want to climb up and hit A when you think you're near the top, and you should jump up. And that, I don't want to say it only works with DK, but it's definitely the best with DK. If you do it with Diddy, you can kind of jump up and then float on top of the leaf until you fall off. Which is really bad. So here it's the same thing right before that blue, like the red to blue color change. You just want to kick. And you land on it and skip that cutscene. So we're just going to kick, jump, B. I like to hit the water if I can because it creates some more lag and it helps you go over and make sure you get the, the correct distance. I guess one thing I'll cover here, uh, this isn't super important, but it's kind of, it's a little time saver and also looks kind of funny. Um, when you're on this last vine heading this way, you can actually jump and then start to roll in the air. Uh, you want to be careful that it, you're definitely over the land before you try it, because you can just, if you do it too soon after you jump, you'll just pound and fall down. So here I'll jump and just start my roll midair like that and then again here holding Z hit B and you roll alright uh, here is a somewhat tricky jump uh, if you don't know where you're going it can be hard but obviously, you don't want to take the time to line this up, but just showing. The tree is n near that last uh, swinging vine right there. So when you're back here, you kind of want to kick in that direction. So yeah, if you jump, like, if you kick too far to this way, it's going to be very hard to land on that tree. So we're just going to go up here, kick, wait a bit, jump, and then hit B. And try to land on it. Now, there's two ways you can do this. Um... I guess I'll show the easier way first. Um, let me briefly review the fact that the more this game lags, the faster your calling actually moves. Uh, we believe that the developers did this because they crammed so much into this game, they kind of figured that lag would be all over. <laughs> so, to make it look like it's not lagging, they made your calling move faster the more it lags. So, in relative to the lag, you look like you're moving the same speed. But because of this, you can run faster and go further distances and even clip through walls entirely, which we'll cover later when we're doing Aztec early. So, you can zoom the camera out, make it kind of face this water so it lags more. And then run to the edge and kick, jump, and then B. And you see, like, you make that by a lot. Like, I landed all the way over here. It's easier, it costs about 2-3 to three seconds, but I think it's a good strat for beginners. The fast way you do this though is obviously just look straight at it, kick, jump, B, and I barely made that. So then of course you just wanna, well I guess first let me, actually I kinda needed that coconut, oops. <laughs> but. If you make it, like, usually what will happen is when you kick and land, you'll land on the slope, and then you just walk up the rest of the way. If you manage to get your kick far enough and land close enough to the dirt patch on the flat part, you can just hold B the whole time, and he'll start his charge up immediately. But I, I, was, I didn't get far enough over, so I didn't get that. I'm going to be a crystal short. Oh, what I'm doing there is, you wanna, where the coin lands is RNG, but you wanna hit the coin and kick off, so you're kicking off during the squawks text. And then as soon as you land, you wanna pull out your gun, aim up here, fire, and then start rolling away during that cutscene. And again, rolling. And then just kick, jump, 
B, just like before. You roll once. Um, to be safe, you can go all the way down near like this corner right here. But you could do it, I think, as far as like back here. What I like to do is go just a little bit past this tag barrel. Just to make sure that this switch over here loads. So we're going to lo look over here. Um, you don't have to zoom in, but I find it a little easier. You can zoom in. Um, the This switch right here, uh, since you're not supposed to have sniper shot, you're not supposed to be able to even shoot it from this distance. You're supposed to only be able to shoot it from up here, looking down. So it can be tricky about, or very picky about where you hit it. It might not register. So what I like to do is kind of like shoot once, move it a little bit, shoot again, just so you have like two spots where you could possibly hit and be okay. So I'll just kind of go like that. And then while you're waiting, look over here. Oops. <laughs> and then try to aim quick enough so you can shoot like that. Because now if I miss, I have to sit here and wait and wait and wait and wait. And I missed anyway. Well, that's what I mean. Like, you want to hit it in the center if you can, but you don't want to take too much time. But as soon as you unlock Diddy, you just want to pause, hit up to go down the exit faster, and mash A. And you're done, Japes. And now you just want to hold pretty much straight down, and roll out. Now we're going to roll to the right. Um, it's a little bit more travel time to get to Aztec going to the right, but if you do this you can roll right over the 3 so that you can use the 3 later to get to K roll faster. So overall it saves time. Oh, here's a little time saver. Um, normally what you do is you come over here and do a whole backflip up. That takes a little bit of time. So when you're about here you can see like what I do is like starting at this corner just kinda go up and do your regular kick jump and B and you just get up this one you have to do the backflip though and then this one um, you can just run up and grab it or you could try to kick jump and grab I don't see that much of a distant difference but I usually just run up and grab the tree so again here we're gonna try to get a leaf jump there it is. That's a perfect leap jump. You just hit A near the top and you just appear in there. I think it saves about a second. So again, you just want to charge up and get this rainbow coin. What I like to do is, as soon as I'm done hitting B, I'll just start mashing C right so that I can get the and start moving over so I get the camera behind me as soon as possible. And then I can explain this one a little bit more. Again, this is in the beginner tutorial, but what I usually do is, because it lags so much, you can just jump and mash B while running. If you don't hit B fast enough though, you'll just kick instead of getting the air attack. And then aim around. I like to press up against that for a little bit. And then do it. If you do, if you actually go over to this too fast, while you're rising, it's harder to grab the ledge if you do it while rising. So it's faster to just turn around immediately and try to do that. But if you, obviously you can do that, or <laughs> if you're still rising in the air when you're trying to jump out of and grab it, it's very hard to grab. So what I usually do is come a little closer to the top. Uh, let's see if I can get this. <laughs> Go out and then as I start falling jump and then he'll grab it so I'll show it one more time um, so we go over here go a little bit out and then come back as he's falling I hold up alright I hold up left to go against the rock and jump um, there we go I guess I got stuck in that corner if you hit up he'll just fall down and re-grab so again, the there's only a very small window down here where you can actually go up and go through the rock. So you just want to make sure you're close enough to the left. And then you just go in. Um, the first thing I do here is hold 
down right and R and then like kind of swing my joystick slowly to the left and up as my camera turns just to like get over here faster rather than running in blind and then waiting and then all that <laughs> it's just a little time saver so I like the backflip backflip and as I'm doing the second backflip start holding right so that I'm close enough to just backflip again immediately instead of walking over and backflip um, I'm gonna try to get a text skip here I choose text comes back because normally what happens is you walk up you get this text then you have to hit B and then you can go to the side but what you can do is when you're there's a little kinda corner here where there's just an angle change of the slope what I do is whenever I get over here I'll do my extended like kick jump B move again um, usually just landing up here not grabbing that ledge and then what we want to turn and back jump like normal to get to the corner but if we back jump too far in we'll get the text I guess his text isn't coming back so you want to actually go a little bit further away so you don't trigger the text and then I start hitting B and change my direction to the left I'm actually not close enough it's a little hard because if you go all the way into the corner it will trigger the text if you don't go far enough in the corner you can't reach like this so you just kinda have to gauge it and it takes some practice I'm not very good at it still there's his text I guess we were getting the skip that's what you want to happen you want his text to pop up uh, as you're clipping in and again we get all the moves you can watch my beginner tutorial for a better explanation of this but we get all the moves that we need by entering caves and then all we have to do is leave because that's all we enter for so it unlocks the moves alright I like to roll straight down here on the right and just go up and then we just do an extended kick jump here alright Aztec early this trick is very precise I wanna say um, there's also just some luck of the lag with the oranges but I think with this setup um, Frame Rush I think is the one that found this setup he taught me pretty recently um, and it's been working really well for me lately so what you want to do first is there's like this big dark line right here it's pretty noticeable when you're out you can just see that you don't want to look right you don't want to run straight at it you want to run a little bit to the right but not so far to the right that you're all the way in the corner so it's just like very slightly I'm holding like up and like kinda wiggling my hand to the right and then back up again just kinda like inch over so I'll just kinda inch way over just barely to the left I just use the point on DK's head as a reference so once you're there, you want to hold Z. You want to hold straight left on the joystick. I like to actually look down at my joystick and make sure I'm holding straight left. And once you get that angle, you can let go of Z. You want to jump. Um, and while you're in the air, not before, because if you do it before, you'll turn around as you jump. You just want to back up here. So you're going to jump, hold right. Jump and hold right. Um, sometimes you can bounce off the corner like that like DK took a little step after he landed which is not good because you want to be all the way in the corner as you can so what you can do is you can jump and pound and that will stop your momentum completely there's no way you can bounce see like there that's what happens if you hold left too early you turn around so we're just going to get back into the position Z hold left let go of everything jump and then pound if you want to do it again, you can be safe. Um, so now you're going to pull out the camera. The camera should be around this position. Um, if you did it too far to the left or right, it can be really far in or really far out when you start. Sometimes that's okay, but optimally you want it around here or even around here. Um, that all depends on how far in you are. That's how you can tell if you're too far in or out. So what I'm going to do here is, I what I like to do, I wonder if I can get my mouse on here. Okay. Um, the inside of the bottom left of the frame, this line right here, 
I like to line it up perfectly with this door frame. It's not super precise, but that's just what I like to do. And uh, if you're just starting to use this trick, I would take my time with it, since you do only have three attempts before you run out of health. Um, so once you get that, uh, you're holding Z the whole time. If you don't hold Z, the camera moves very wildly like this. If you hold Z, it moves in smaller increments, which makes it much easier to aim. Um, now, while holding Z still, I'm going to hit C down. That makes uh, the camera go the camera go away. Um, now, the timing for this is one, a very very brief pause, and then the last three, because you can only throw four oranges at a time. So the idea is you want to throw one so it bounces, and then the last three to explode and explode all four inches at once creating enough lag to send you through so we're going to try to do this okay yeah I didn't clip in there uh, that could have been my timing was off or because I was sitting there moving the camera around so much so I'm going to try this again so again like very little bit to the right of that mark Z hold left jump pound make sure I'm in the corner camera. See it's a little bit more to the left than it was last time. That just depends on your position lining up. Go to the camera. And we're in. There we go. Alright, now we're just going to row up here. This is just like caves. We're going to go up, hold Z, turn around. Back up and slap in. That's a very precise trick. It does save like uh, I think a little bit over three minutes now. So it's definitely worthwhile learning, but it can be frustrating at first. Alright. Um, depending on your health, like it, if it took you three times to do it, you might want to curl a Kremlin and pick up the health. It doesn't waste a whole lot of time and it's better than dying here later on. Again, what I did there is I kicked right before that cutscene started to get a little extra distance. Yeah, the key one uh, boss fight that we did in the beginner's tutorial uh, takes about two minutes, but there's also the fact that you have to turn in the key and watch the cutscene and come back up. It's two to three minutes, somewhere around there. Uh, so we want to tag warp one and start rolling over to here to this side. This next trick is called guitar skip. I covered it in my beginner's tutorial, but a lot of people are having trouble with it, so I'm going to try to give a little bit more of an explanation. So, we're going to run straight up to this corner. I like to make sure the camera... You pretty much just don't touch the camera. Leave it as it is. You can zoom out a little bit if you want. Run up to this upright corner. You want to go really close to the right. Like, just right in this corner as much as you can. And then once he's facing left like this, like perfectly left, like parallel with the wall. Uh, okay, I got messed up. See, there we go. That's when I start hitting up. And when I say up, I mean towards the left wall. Actually, I think I was a little bit too far to the right there. You just want his, his foot kind of where it is now, touching the wall. But you don't want to be like really far in the wall like that or you can barely see his left his right foot. So there we go. That's still a little bit far to the left, but it should work out. Oops. <laughs> okay. So now I'm gonna start going up towards the top wall. Just barely tapping it. Sometimes you can land on it, that means you just push too far on it. That was actually in a bad spot there. Let me start over. So again, like, just kind of inching your way over to the right just a little bit, and then you want to focus on the top. Because the top is the one you're going to clip into. There we go. So you, what you notice what happened there, um, he turned up in the cutscene. He turned to be facing this way. Not in the cutscene. In the jump. He turned to be facing this way, and then when he hit the ground, he slid over to the left. So once you slide over to the left, like if I tried backflip jumping again, 
I'll hit the top because I've now clipped out of bounds and then you just hold up and you're out so I'll show it one more time really quick go a little bit to the left or to the right and then start hitting up just inching your way up a little bit more each time I hit too far up there so I hit the top there he land he slid over to the left and I'm in and I'd like to tap R until the camera's behind me and then we're just gonna start rolling down here now what I do is once that tree is like just about to my right uh, you can go a little bit closer if you want to be safe I can turn pretty much uh, I want to say a 45 degree angle up left and just start rolling straight and then I'll end up right here and I just roll across the snake road we're gonna kick to do a little shortcut roll across we can kick from up here into the tag barrel and then tag Diddy and then we're just gonna enter here um, we're gonna get uh, Simeon Slam first because the first time we talked to Cranky so he's programmed to give you Simeon Slam even though you already had the move from Funky Weapons Glitch and then he'll just kick you out because it thinks you're not supposed to body boost. What I do here is I hold up and just kind of mash A and you just jump right back in immediately mashing through the text, mashing A, buying the moves until you get Rocket Barrel And then in, it'll ask you to go by saving spring because you've been all the way to Crystal Caves beating all the coins and it'll just kick you out. And now we're going to tag DK. And we're going to make our way back across. Again, you can use kicks to kind of shorten the time that you're running. And you want to be careful about your health there. If you lose health, you need full health to do a trick coming up. We're just gonna roll all the way through all these. Going all the way across. You can hit warp too. It doesn't really matter. It could be a little safer because if you die coming up here, you can use warp too instead of guitar skipping again. Alright, so now what I do here, um, I see down. Helps create a little bit more lag. Um, and at this third blue from the top is about where you want to get a moon kick. And you want to do a moon kick so you can end up uh, up here. And that way you can clip in. This is Baboon Blast Skip. In my previous tutorial, we bought Baboon Blast with DK and did this. And this saves a good bit of time. So we're going to go up here. I like to just jump and mash B immediately. You want to hit B as soon as you can after hitting A. And then I do a little spiral to wait for me to hit my max height. Also, you see the sandstorm running right now, and it stops. This trick is actually easier while the sandstorm is going, because it creates more lag. But it is definitely possible to do it without it, so you just run up, mashing B. You can time it if it helps. So again, spiraling, waiting for me to hit my max height, and then jumping over here. You can time it also if you just want to jump, and then right before you hit the ground, then start hitting B. If you go too far forward like that, you'll slide off. Just jump and kind of move your way up until you see the shadow on this ledge and you can land up. Alright, so the easier strat here is to turn left 90 degrees, hit R. So you have you can like hold up and run without worrying about falling off. Um, we're going to clip into this and then fall down immediately and try to land in the loading zone. The easiest way to clip uh, for me is you don't want to kick too early because then you're just... Oh, whoops, I clipped it. <laughs> if you kick too early, you'll slide up that slope and not clip in. Then you have to worry about landing back on. You want to actually take a step, maybe two, onto the slope and then kick. And it makes it much easier to clip in. And then you'll fall down. Where I am right now, I'm in the door frame. But the loading zone is actually ahead of me. So I have to hold down, and then it pulls me in.
Alright, uh, next we are going to do Fire BK Skip. Um, if you took damage on the Snake Road, luckily there's four melons right here that you can pick up and be okay. Uh, this trick is very time sensitive. Like, you can't spend too long swimming through vertical walls through this gate, or you'll run out of health and you're going to die before you hit Lanky. So in the begin beginner's tutorial I covered, uh, you could see up clip there and walk out of bounds, but this is the faster strat by a good bit. Because you also get the death warp instead of having to exit and enter. Alright, so we're going to go in. I really have to do it kind of fast, so I want to explain it now. I go to the top right of that gate, and then just swim through vertical walls like normal. And then I'll show you what I do from there. So we're just going to go in, dive... You want to make sure you're head on. You can also do it from the bottom right, too. I just like the right side in general. See, so now I jump. You'll see I'm, I'm at quarter health, so I'm about to die. If I took too long in that clip, I was going to die without getting here. Um, to do the death uh, cutscene skip for Lanky, you would stand close to the slope. You don't want to walk too far, obviously, because then you're just falling and die. Pull out the gun. Aim it. It do, you don't have to like take the time to aim right at the switch. Like if you're like aiming down here, as long as you're um, like within like on the same line up and down of it, you'll be okay. So you just zoom out. Uh, you want to hit B and immediately hold down. So you, you see the balloons like spawn there. It means I've unlocked Lanky, but I die and I skip the cutscene, and it also puts me right at the beginning of the level instead of exiting and entering. So we're just going to turn the camera around, swing across these, use warp 1. Now, we're going to kick across this gap and hold B the whole time. Actually, I think I used all my, yeah, I used all my coconuts, because uh, I was trying to explain something earlier. So I'm just going to run up here and grab a coconut real quick. <laughs> Normally, that's why we get 3. So I would have been fine here on coconuts, but I was explaining something in last one. So okay, we're gonna kick. Oops, a daisy. <laughs> we're gonna kick, holding B the whole time. Just walk over and let go. And as we pick up the coin, jump into the tag barrel. So long jumping is slightly faster, but it's harder to control. Uh, you just cartwheel up that slope, pull out the guns, look up, shoot, and try to put the gun away before this cutscene starts. I didn't get the C up, so I had to hit C up after that. We're just gonna work our way over here. What I like to do here, it's not necessarily faster, but I find it easier to do quickly rather than just running up and trying to see up clip in here. I hit C up, turn, uh, until I'm about facing here, it's obviously not precise. You just want to be um, kind of like a 90 degree turn to Diddy's right. And then you press R to get the camera fixed. So then you do what I was doing in Aztec, where you jump first and then move your direction. So I would jump, get over to this corner. That way I can just hit up. And I'm, it's easier to do C-up clips at an angle, kind of like as close to the angle as possible, rather than doing them head-on. Because it gives you a little bit more space to try to fall in. So like right here, I'll start walking up. I waited a little bit too long there, but you just want to hit C up when you get close and kind of tap up, hit C up to stop your momentum. There we go. And it's much easier to do it head-on like that, I feel. Or not head-on, but sideways like that, rather than head-on. Now, you'll see that the camera kind of has a mind of its own. <laughs> like, I'm trying to change it, and it just snaps back. So what I like to do is, as soon as I clip in, hold right as and walk as much as I can before it snaps and switches my direction on me. You just kind of have to be a little careful if you're taking it slow, because it'll snap back, and then you'll walk end up walking out of bounds. And then we just head over to the left like this. Try to land as close to the slope as possible. And then head right over to the G. Backflip. Right over here. Uh, 
I explained this better in my beginner's tutorial, but you just have to do the first letter wrong and then spell it Kong. Alright, now you want to reset because you can't just walk out of Aztec now that you've done Aztec early. If you try to walk out, you'll hit the door and just keep walking, but it like you can't go any further because the door's in your way, so you're just walking infinitely and you soft lock the game. So you can reset as soon as it saves after you unlock Tiny. Um, what I'll use as reference is the third line of text when the first letter appears, I hit the reset button. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So we're just going to chimpy charge on this last one. Get ready to hit reset. It's like first line, second line, third line. As soon as you see the R and right, you can reset. You can probably do it a little earlier, but that's the reference I use. And then you, it auto saves, so you don't have to worry about losing any data. Okay, now, what I'm going to do here, um, I'm actually going to turn on infinite oranges, just for the sake of practice, and showing you guys, not practice, but, yeah. <laughs> um, this is not allowed in a run. Uh, cheats are not allowed in any percent, and not allowed in any category, really. So, don't, I mean, they're good for practice. So I'm turning them all on so I just have oranges. I get, uh, but when you, normally what you want to do is start it up, you're right here, go to the r right by hitting left on the joystick. Hitting right so you're on story skip, hitting up, and then just going back to your file and going. Uh, we're going to do the same thing as before, we're going to moon tail up. There is a faster method you can moon kick, but we're not going to cover that in this tutorial as it's too difficult. That'll be like an expert thing. <laughs> and it saves minimal amount of time. So you want to tag warp 1 there because later you're going to be turning in the key and using warp 1 to go back. So you just tap warp 1 really quick. Uh, as soon as you can, you want to dive, swim over, and then get up. Uh, and then we're going to moon tail again. Just a very quick review. Uh, Diddy has a double jump. You can jump out of his B attack. So if you do his B attack as he does a double jump, you can jump out of it and then continue it like so. And then you just use that to get up here. If you get stuck on that, you can also go back to the old tutorial. I like to long jump my way up here because it's slightly faster, but it is harder to control. The alternative is the cartwheel and jump out of it. Uh, when I get up here, Instead of walking all the way around and then climbing up, you can jump, hit B to get up, and then just backflip up. And then long jump. But you want to watch out for this guy, so I like the cartwheel around here so he doesn't knock me off, which he has done before. <laughs> so we're just going to go over here. Instead of going up the stairs, we're going to go up this side, C and A, and backflip up. And then just walk in. Alright, we're going to tag in here, tag Lanky. Um, this is why I got oranges. I covered this before, but just a quick review. Um, you can just long jump at him, like so, on the right, and then start hitting B and hope that you go in. But more likely, you're going to not be close enough. So by using oranges, uh, I like to throw them at this tag barrel. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. Uh, some people like, I actually like switch, like if a, a strat that I'm using doesn't work, I'll try another. You can throw four oranges like so, wait a little bit, then long jump, and try to time the lag. But sometimes that doesn't work, that was actually a pretty bad angle, I want to go up to the right of him. And just kind of hope that you go in. Uh, there's another method. Um, you throw four oranges, jump, and then walk at them. And that worked for me that time. You don't want to go immediately, because then you're going to miss the timing of the lag. 
helps you. I don't know. Like some people prefer the walk. Some people prefer the jump. I'll show it one more time. Uh, but it's really just a matter of kind of preference, I think. Let's get that text out of the way. Oh, I step right around this line. You can see like this corner forming right in front of the five about. Just turn to the right. Jump. And walk. Didn't work for me that time. My angle was a little off. Oh my god. <laughs> a lot of oranges went off there. It's kind of weird. I'm really messing this up pretty bad. I actually don't use the walk method that much. I like using the long jump. Yeah. There's a bunch of ways. You can jump, you can spin, you can whatever works. Ha, huh, that's weird. It played the cutscene again, even though I've already been in here. Huh. But it didn't display the text. That's new. <laughs> well, it's something new every time I play this game. Alright, so what we want to do here, if I, t if I take too many steps forward, it's going to trigger a cutscene talking to Chunky. Uh, so we're going to go, we're going to try to go down and right, like towards this corner, and try to long jump during this text. Yeah, I missed the timing there. But the idea is, you see this cutscene, it's a kind of long, not really, but it's better. If you long jump at the right time, at the right angle, you'll land. What the hell? There's no text. I'm so confused right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but you're supposed to be like right around here, and text shows up saying, oh, you've just used Lanky for the first time. Um, depending on how many, anyway, depending on how many times you took you to do factory early, you might want to walk over here and grab these oranges, and then maybe even grab these oranges. Um, if you do it perfectly without oranges, which if you even try without oranges, you'll have 10 left. Uh, this next trick you want to use 4 oranges for, so you have 2 tries at it, so you have 2 extra oranges, because 4 and 4 is 8, and you have 10. So you might as well use the last two to kill these guys. It's faster than... The alternative is to charge up your B-move. And use that to kill them. Um, so depending on how many oranges you have, if you have at least four and two extra, or a multiple of four and two extra, you can use those two to kill these guys. Otherwise, you can just charge up B. Um, so now, how I do this trick. This trick is uh, pretty picky. Um, it's a little hard, but it saves a lot of time. What I do is, you see this little mark on the floor? I'll try to use my mouse again. Right here, I like to line up Linky's foot with the right side of it. His left foot on the right side. Uh, once I do that, I hold Z, pull down. And I hit C right twice. I'm not sure if this angle matters, but I think I feel like it shows more of the explosion and creates more lag. That's just my preference, and this is how I do it. So then, once you're like that, you pull up the camera. You want to aim just like so, having the left, the top left lined up with the left side of this, whatever this is. Uh, put away the camera. We're gonna throw a one, and then one, two, three. Yeah, see it didn't work that time. And unfortunately you only get two tries at this because if you lose too much health, as soon as you land you're gonna die. There we go. So I clipped. Now you don't want to wait too long because they will respawn. The reason you kill them is if you throw an orange they'll actually homing on them and screw up the timing. So you should clip like this. Um, I like to hold Z, pull down, and wait for the camera to spin around, and then I hold R to keep the camera behind me, and just start long jumping up, maybe a little bit up to the left. Um, if you want to go fast, 
you can just kind of gauge where you are and keep long jumping up and up left, hoping not to land in the dark zone. But what should happen is you should long jump once or twice. Lanky will go black and then reappear, and that loads the next area. So you can hit C up, and you should be able to see this. A good angle, I think, is to aim just to the right of it. If you aim too far right like that, you'll probably end up in the dark room. If you aim like this, you could probably land on the switch. But I would do this. Landing on the switch is very difficult, and I honestly can't do it at all. <laughs> so just to the right of that, if you want to take the time and you see up, or you can just gauge it. Hold R, and just keep long jumping straight up until you falling down and there we go so now we're going to just back up, up here back flip up here again holding up left kind of just timing it like how I'm timing here I guess not so much up left but I like to aim the, the camera towards the corner, and then you just hold up. Maybe very slightly up left. And now we can just jump up here. Alright, um... There's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, there's a very fast method of like pounding early, like this, and then walking on the switch and it goes down, and you can try to long jump down this pipe during the cutscene. Um, but honestly that's very difficult so what I like to do is pound on the switch hit B to cancel the pound and then try to jump down this slope and then you'll slide down and then you can kind of long jump your way over and it skips the time of falling down I'm not sure exactly but what's the fastest but that's what I like to do I can try to show off the fastest method, see if I can get it. If I can remember how to do it even, actually. I think I have to be a little closer. Oh, I got it. <laughs> That's the ideal method. You want to be very close, and then you walk over. There's this weird mechanic in this game where if you pound and then walk over a switch, it counts as you pounding the switch. And that gives you the ability to turn around and long jump down the slope. So you actually head in the direction and you skip the time of falling down, which is very fast. But it's not a huge deal. I'm not even sure if it saves time either way. I guess I can cover this real quick. Well, how I like to jump this box is head in this corner. Back jump, back jump, small jump, back jump. And then you start long jumping up here. And we're just going to buy the same moves as always. Uh, cut this corner a little bit. And go right to Cranky, or er, Candy. Mash and B, just buying the first upgrade. Oh, I have unlimited coins. Oops. <laughs> but you're supposed to, you have enough coins anyway, if you've done all the rainbow coins. Just hit B. Normally I would just say you don't well I should just actually say you have enough coins, but you just keep it in B. You don't have to worry about anything else with Lanky. Go in here, hold right for two Kongs. Tag Chunky. You can start holding left to kind of get a little extra distance out of that fall towards Cranky. And just buy all the moves you can here, which should be uh, three moves. It will just be as many as you can. Uh, mine's just because I have cheats on. I have infinite coins. Because even though you don't buy um, Gorilla Gun, it just gives it to you in the final fight. I'm not sure why. There's a couple spots. It just does that for you. In the game. Gives you certain moves you don't even have. So it should kick you out there. It shouldn't even 
that lets you try to buy that. So we're going to head over to the right here. We're going to hit left once we're in the tag barrel to tag tiny. And again, try to head a little bit towards cranky if you can. CB, jump out of it. And go in. And buy everything you can, which should be at the monkey port. Uh, just to reiterate, it's very important that you do Chunky first, because uh, he doesn't need to buy his 7 coin move, so you have extra coins with him, and he can just buy a Super Simeon Slam. Um, if you go in with Tiny first, it'll make you buy Super Simeon Slam before Monkey Port, and if that happens, you're going to run out of coins, because you only got 15 coins with all the rainbow coins, you only got 3 for five each so that's three plus five plus seven uh, if you did tiny first you'd have you would need three plus five plus five plus seven which would be 20 coins and you don't have 20 so you just gotta make sure you go in with chunky first you're gonna be in trouble <laughs> and not be able to buy monkey port so I long jump all the way here try to long jump towards this one and go in All right, we're gonna over here. I like to be pressed up against this wall. Kind of helps slow down your momentum, so you're not walking too fast. You can see how fast she'll go like this if you're against the wall. It's very slow. And just use C up and buffer your way down. Ugh. Long jump your way over here. You can start kind of mashing pause now. So you can pause immediately, hit up and exit. And that's so uh, you don't have to watch a cutscene. If you're very, very bad at these C up clips, you might even want to just watch the cutscene, but you have to be like, if you can't get a C-up clip in a minute, then you might just want to watch the cutscene. But if you can do it under a minute consistently, like you should be able to do it within 20 seconds, then you definitely want to do this again to skip that cutscene. Alright, so Mad Jack. Um, I don't think I went very detailed in my last tutorial, so I'll try to cover it a little bit more as best I can. I'm probably not the best person to really go over this fight, but I'll try my best. Um, I guess to start off, Magic has two kinds of jumps. He has what we call a fast jump and a slow jump. Very clever names, I guess. <laughs> um, if you are more than one platform away from him, he will jump faster trying to catch up to you. The first two phases he's pretty much set to go one direction. Like he won't backtrack to try to hit you even if you're right behind him. He'll continue around in his little circle around the squares trying to catch up. So what I like to do in this first jump, wait a second, jump straight to the right. See now I'm the square ahead of him so he jumps fast and then I'm on the square in front of him so he jumps slow. So I kinda just keep going diagonals. I see the go diagonal. So he does all these really fast jumps. Because I keep being over a platform ahead of him. And then uh, this spawn is completely random. That was a pretty good spawn. And I do the same thing for this phase as well. So like I go up. He won't go back at you. He'll keep around in his circle. So you just go up on the diagonals. Um... He has set counts. I'm trying to remember them at the moment. Oops. So you can like count, so you don't accidentally go one too many. Oops, that was weird. So 
So again, third phase. First three phases, this is pretty much what I do. Just keep going diagonal. And he just keeps going really fast. Oops. Again, I need to land the counts. This is the worst spawn that he can give you. Just because of that, it's very hard to dodge. What I like to do, if I'm in this situation where the platform is on my left, but he's right in front of me, he's going to chuck it, this fireball, and it's going to go extremely fast at me and probably hit me. So what I would do is I'll go slightly down, like slightly down left, and then go up left after he throws it. So it gives me a little bit more space so I can kind of move out of the way in time for the fireball. I'll show you what I mean right here, like down. Yeah, and then go up left. So it'll miss me on the right. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Phases 4 and 5, he can now backtrack and hit you. So if I try to go straight up diagonal right now, he would go either to the left or right, and then go right back up top, and probably hit me before I can even land on the platform. So, what I would do in this situation is kind of wait and see what direction he goes, and then just go to the opposite direction. So if he goes left, I'll go right, and vice versa. So he went right, so I'll just kind of go to the left. And then try to aim my way back towards the center, so he does like a fast jump. And so now I'm back in this situation where he's going to jump really soon and then you can uh, act accordingly. If you want to be just safe you can just keep going in a circle honestly. He might switch directions on you then you just go the other way in the circle. Uh, there is a faster strat. Phase 4 and 5 he has what's called an axis. Basically he has a direction, a direction that he's more likely to go if you're in a situation where you could turn around. It's, it's, it's really hard to explain. I'm not very good at telling what it is. But I'll try to get it in a situation where I can clearly point out. So go right here. I'm going to go up. Again, I'm going to go right straight up. Now, he went to the right there because he was trying to backtrack on top of me. He's about to go on top. You can. It's It's very hard to catch... I'm not very good at it. That's probably something that could be covered uh, in the expert tutorial, which will probably not be done by me. Actually, you might not have noticed there, but I actually got a cutscene skip there. He plays a cutscene the first time he shoots the laser. If you get lucky enough on phase four, he will put the switch right next to you. So you can pound it. It starts to play the cutscene from shooting the laser the first time, but then it interrupts it with the him taking damage. So that was really cool that I got to show you guys that. So normally what I do is to be safe, but also faster, is go up a diagonal, wait for the jump, and wait for him to start jumping at me again, then go diagonal. So get a fast jump, then a slow jump. Then a fast jump, then a slow jump. So fast and slow. It's better than just going in a circle, so you're not like continually getting slow jumps every time. But it's still not the optimal strat. And I'm also, you'll see me going towards the center, because what I want to happen is to him put the switch very, very close to him. So that I can hit the key immediately, and not have to travel very far. So fast and slow. And hopefully... No, oh, that's bad luck. Putting the switch behind them is always really bad. Oh god, okay. <laughs> well, it's actually it's pretty good because now the key will be right in front of me. Alright, so now that the key's right in front of me, I can just kind of hold straight up and then Z plus B to go a little faster and try to aim like right at it. And you can just jump and try to hit it on the way down. The sooner you hit it, obviously, the better, because you just leave faster. Alright. Now, as soon as you leave, mashing pause, hit up and A to exit. And now you're here, kind of just aim your way, go leave as fast as possible. And now we're going to go to helm. Going down, going over to the left. There's a couple ways you can do this. Some people like to just jump off and point out 12 from here. Um... You can do 
I think I covered this in the old tutorial. You just run towards an edge and hold Z as you're sliding off. And for whatever reason, if you're holding Z, the game doesn't recognize that you're falling. So you won't take fall damage. I like to come down here. Um, actually, I don't even fall down yet. I'm still up here. Just kind of long drop on my way over. Fall down here. Hit the Kremlin. Then hold Z. Then turn around. And then what that does is it puts me right next to the monkey point. I just jump up and use it. I don't think any strat is faster than the other, but that's just how I do it. Alright, so now we're going to get on here. I'm going to turn the camera all the way left, but just keep it in C left until it's like this. Hit C down. The more it lags, the further you go. Uh, you can also do it, it's probably better to do it like this with DK Isles in the background, just so it creates more lag. Um, the method that I went over in my beginner's tutorial actually turned out to be much harder than for people. It was slower and it was harder. So this method that I'm about to show is faster and easier, so I don't know why I didn't do this in the first place. Alright, so we're going to Z and B, jump out of it, ponytail twirl. You want to take a step or two. There's actually a step or two you can take on slopes before it'll slide you down. And during that step or two, you can slide again. If you hold, I guess I should fall down and show you. Okay, again with the mouse. You're gonna land about here. You don't want to hold. You don't want to try to slide up here because it's a further distance and you can't make it. You want to try to slide over here, but not so far over, obviously, that you fall off. You just want to slide up here, and you should be able to make it in one slide. All right, so we get up here. Get this angle. Point out twelve. Take like one or two steps. Z plus B, and you're just gonna slide up, which is pretty easy and a lot faster. All right. So now we're gonna go up to this corner. It's pretty random if you clip or not. Uh, it also just depends on you. What the I'm sliding? Why am I sliding? What <sighs> this game? All right. Don't go over there. Go over to this corner. Hold up and just kind of keep jumping. Hopefully you clip. All right. So now that I've clipped, you're gonna see the camera go flip back and forth. So the loading zone can either be on your left or your right. This takes a little bit of practice. You could turn a kind of tell exactly where it is. But as soon as you jump through, you don't want to mash A because you don't want to accidentally jump point to a tool immediately and let go because you're not gonna be able to point to a tool again. So if you're really not if you really want to like you're starting out you can pause here actually and tell like okay I see the monkey port pad right there which means the entrance is on my left it's down and on my left over here if you don't see that pad then it is down and on your right obviously this isn't optimal it's just a good beginning strat if you can like you can very quickly when you start twirling tell okay it's on my left yeah, I mean, you have a good bit of time. Um, if you just know where to look and what to look for, you can tell pretty easily where it is. And not have to worry about falling all the way down. Alright, uh, this this is all the same from here on out, though. No, it's nothing different from my beginner tutorial. But I'll run through it again. So you're going to go in this corner. Um, you don't, you can you see up, but you don't really, you shouldn't. It's not super precise. You just kind of aim towards the corner, C and A. Uh, if you didn't clip, then your angle is very slightly off. Again, very slightly off. C and A. Oh, great. You'll see that he goes much higher up. She will go much higher up. Or you get stopped by a wall there, that means your angle's off. If it's correct, you go all the way up, and then you can just kind of hold towards the wall once you're at the top of your jump. Uh, and clip out. And then I just tap R over and over until I'm facing the right direction. Or got the camera behind me. And then we're just going to long jump down this path. Careful to not go too far in. And then once you're over here, um, you can try to cut. If you cut it too short, you can actually hit a barrier and just fall in the lava. So the further left, the better. But obviously, the further right, the faster. So you just kind of want to just jump, point to a twirl over. You don't have to land, you can actually hit the logs up from underneath, but you just want to hit it and make sure you don't hit the lava. 
Alright. I'm just gonna kill these guys real quick. You wouldn't kill these kill any of them, obviously, in a real run. But just for the sake of this. We're gonna run up do very quickly rotating back and forth between Z B and jump, Z B and jump, Z B and jump. It's not that bad. You just gotta make sure you don't wait. If you wait too long, then you can't jump. Or if you wait too long, you can't uh, slide again. So you just gotta be very quick. Oops. Wow, okay. Showing you what not to do. There we go. <laughs> this slope, you can actually just walk up like normal. I guess they expected you to... Oh, another slope. I'm not going to walk up that. I'm going to handstand up. But you can just long jump up very quickly. You're going to head over here. Tag Chunky. Put your gun. Shoot that. Oh, I have homing ammo. That's cool. <laughs> you see I got a little primary punch at the end of that. Um... I like timing the punch, because it's not precise at all, as long as you get it before the cutscene start, it gets you a little extra slide. Uh, the best strat, though... ...from here. Alright, so we just shot down the door, we're coming in here, we're going to swing across the vines and do terminal clip. Alright. What I like to do here is, as soon as I jump off this, hit R. So I'm facing straight up. You can run up, hit B to kill the Kremlin. Sometimes they'll be right in your way. So I'm just holding up and holding R still. So I'm going to very slowly... You see like right here, Chunky's kind of jerking back and forth. He's not doing it here, but as soon as you're in this angle, he starts. So I'm just very slowly going to the right, and then as soon as he stops jerking, I hit C up. Um, this is probably extremely hard to see, actually. It's pretty dark. Let me turn up the brightness. That's still pretty dark. Uh, hit a little bit to the left. Kind of like, not very much. It's not super precise. Just like, kind of tap it just a little bit to the left. Get out of it. Jump B. You should grab. And then you just hit up. And you climb up and you're through. Do it one more time. This is just how I do it. Different people have different uh, ways. But he's kind of like going back and forth. He stops. Hits C up. Just move a little bit to the left. Jump B. Uh, he didn't grab it, which means I need to go a little bit more left. Jump B. Hmm. That's weird. Uh, a little bit more to the left then. There he goes. I just wasn't going far enough left. If you go too far left, he'll grab it and get stuck up there, but he won't clip. If you're too far to the right like I was, he just won't grab it at all. This is how I do it. I, it usually gets me up pretty quick. There are probably other ways, though. Alright. Sorry, I did that kind of fast. Um... We're just going to follow the outside around here until we see Tiny. I'm going to um, kind of like parallel to this left wall here and just go straight. This can get kind of tricky because the camera kind of spins a little bit right there. So you just kind of have to keep... If you keep holding up, you should end up too far to the right here. You can kind of gauge going a little bit left because you want to end up right underneath here. This is the best place to do it. So you're holding C up. Or sorry, no, you're holding up on the analog stick. As soon as it goes black like that, you hit C up, and it'll fix the camera and load the next area. So you kind of like make sure you don't go too far. If you go too far, obviously you're in here and you're done because you can't leave. Um, so we're just gonna follow this place around. You don't want to go too far out, uh, but obviously you don't want to go too far in either. So you kind of set the gauge where you are, and kind of curve with the room. And then once you get to this point, the camera likes to zoom out. And then you walk down, but then it'll zoom, or zoom out, it likes to zoom in, then it'll zoom back out, then it'll zoom in again. So like, it gets a little weird. You can press R though. If you want to be safe, you can 
you see this little radar over here? Kind of just spinning back and forth. I like to make that radar right on the left. Um, then hit C up, and then hold down R so you make sure you're going straight, and then just keep long jumping like once or twice. And then as soon as it goes black again, you hit C up maybe. And now I'm right underneath where I need to be. So you can go a little bit to the left or right, just get on the edge, backflip, and get your way back up here. Um, if you're really worried about fake key, you can hit this warp right here, but you shouldn't be getting fake key. I'll go over that a little bit in a second. What I like to do here, some people like to um, go up like this, so they can just kind of barely tap one direction back and forth try to land in. I'm not a huge fan of that method. I like to get parallel with this back wall, jump back a little bit, and then just jump left and right. And I get in pretty quick like that. And then you just want to hold straight up and you walk right through. Um, now, I walk up a little bit, not too far, then I turn right. It's kind of hard to gauge. If you go, basically, if you turn left too soon, you'll walk right back in bounds and go on top of those stairs. So, I like to do it like this. Um, long jump. This is where it gets a little tricky. Um, there are people have... That's uh, a little bright. Let me turn that down just a little bit. People have a lot of different ways they like doing this part. Because um, what happens is sometimes you can pick up the key and it just won't register. So... Uh, you can head up these stairs and then head straight across or you can just head straight from here and just keep going straight uh, the keys over there it's gonna go straight now here it's very important that you don't long jump or you don't backflip up here on the right you want to go to this back side right over here and then backflip up and try to it's a little tricky at first because you can't see Chunky, obviously. But you just want to make sure you don't go too far. You need to get up back up here. Um, I think we found that if you look at the key first, it sometimes helps it load. Um, some people think if you walk underneath the door and then backflip up, it's easier and it helps it load. But we really aren't sure what causes it, so we're just going to kind of walk into it. Uh, you can reset pretty early there. What I like to do is here donk, donk, donkey, and then I hit the reset button. Just to make sure it saves. If you reset too early, it will not save. If you're really paranoid, after you do it, you can hit pause and do that. But that's not necessary. But you can, if you really want to. Then you just hit the reset button. Everybody has their own um, reference for that. That's just the one I use. But you can always ask around. I really don't get fake key very often. I know some people who get it very often. There were some people talking about the last tutorial and saying that they got it all the time. Which, I'm not really sure how you get it all the time unless you are backflipping in at the wrong spot in that room. Um, now, we don't need to turn on story skip because there's no more cutscenes that play that can be avoided using that. So now that we're here, the reason we hit warp 1 earlier, so now we can just hit st head straight over here. And then we just use warp 1 as we leave. Uh, now, what should happen is you should see key 8 and then key 3 when you turn them in. If you see key 3 first, that's a problem. But yeah, we got key 8, so we didn't get the fake key. Which is good. Alright, well, I probably messed it up, but what you can do is if you can time it correctly while you're standing down there and waiting, at the uh, right before you think the key 3 cutscene is going to start, you can kick to get a little more. So you end up here when the cutscene ends instead of down here. It's not a big deal if you miss, obviously, you just walk back down and trigger it. But it, it saves like that much time. <laughs> so it's not like a huge deal, but it's nice.
And then we're just going to walk straight down, use warp 1. And since we walked around the other direction and activated warp 3, we can just walk straight over here, warp 3. And we're right next to it. And there it is. Final boss. Um, I am actually not going to do cable just because uh, you can look at my last tutorial. I'm going to put a link right up here. You can click on uh, to go right to uh, that part of the tutorial if you really want to refresh how to do K roll. But it's it's a pretty much straightforward fight. There are some harder strats to save a little bit of time, um, but most of it is just practice learning the patterns. Uh, but you should just, you should be okay. There isn't a whole lot. There's no tricks. There's nothing like that. Uh, I think I explained it in the last, uh, tutor tutorial pretty well. There are, uh, lag reduction strats that you can do. But I think that's going to be saved for another tutorial. You can always just watch, uh, either my runs or Ring Rush's runs or anyone. And see how they do these fights. Um, I guess if enough people like really can't do this fight, I can uh, make a tutorial just for K Roll or something like that. But that is about it for now. Uh, hopefully, this helps. And this route, I want to say this route is about three to four minutes faster than the beginner route I was showing. So this is meant for people who have played the game for a little bit, maybe got a time down around an hour or so. You can start doing these tricks, which are harder, but they save a good bit of time. Alright, well, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Feel free to message me or comment if you have any questions.